Hi, this is Dr. John Finn. Welcome to another episode of the Tougher Minds podcast. I'm out walking again, and we've been doing a lot of work with our clients over the last month or so, really thinking about how do we help our people or their people to get back to their best in whatever the new world of work looks like. Some people are going to be moving to more hybrid models of work. Some people are really keen to get everyone back into the office. But whatever people are doing, there will be challenges because ultimately people have developed a lot of new habits in this lockdown period. And I think what's emerging is that a lot of the habits people have developed are not helpful. They're bad habits. They make being healthy, happy, and at our best, more difficult. So we need to recognise that in order to manage it and overcome it. And what we also need to recognise is that these habits are not going to necessarily be very easy to change and in order to do the change efficiently and effectively we, we can use scientific insights let's just have a recap on the importance of habits for human beings so we've we've been around as homo sapiens for about 300 thousand years and from well for all of our time or the vast majority of our time on planet Earth until pretty recently. Energy's been a very scarce resource. There hasn't always been a supermarket on the corner. So we've got really good at conserving energy. And that's why our brain turns everything into a habit. So what new science has shown is that most of what we're doing is a habit. It's, a, it's automatic or semi-automatic behavior or what we call mindless behavior. So we're not really thinking about what we do. It's just ticking away in the background, if you like. We have a tiny bit of consciousness and we can use that consciousness to be more self-aware, what we call intelligent self-watching. And we can use that consciousness in the form of uh, will amina power or willpower, depending what you want to call it, to help us to start building new habits. And then in order to secure new habits, we need to use behavioral science. But habits are absolutely central to everything that we're doing. And some of the sort of ha some of the habits we have are quite counterintuitive in the sense of we don't often think of things like worrying as being a habit or beating ourselves up as being a habit. And they are habits. They're just as habitual as um, scratching your face or something like that, or the, the, something that you might label as a more obvious bad habit. Um, saying like a lot in when you speak whatever it is eating too many chocolate biscuits these psychological invisible thoughts that we have that are sometimes negative like beating ourselves up and worrying they're habits and they work like any other habit and the way that all habits work are the more you practice something the better you get because our brain is made up of about 100 billion neurons and those neurons are like plasticine and we can change our neurons by practicing by practicing how we think by practicing what we do and that process is called neuroplasticity which just means that the neurons in our brain the hundred billion or so of them are like plastic or plasticine they change and for many people not everyone but for many people what's been happening over this lockdown period is They've been practicing lots of unhelpful habits from worrying too much, from getting stressed too much, from beating themselves up too much. And they've been growing new wires in their brain, new neurological connections in their brain to strengthen those habits, essentially to make them easier to do. And in order to unravel those habits, we're gonna to have to practice something differently. And this is, this is a lot of the things we've been speaking to our clients about and their people about, as I said, in the last month or so, as people start to think about making that transition back into what's been termed the new normal, which will look a little bit different for everybody. So when we think about building new habits, and I think there's a zeitgeist around new, about habits at the moment. There's a couple of journalists who've written very popular books um, about how to build new habits. I'm always skeptical of those books because these guys are journalists, they're great writers, but they haven't studied these areas. 
like scientists have, like myself and people in my organisation have, we've dedicated our lives to this. Uh, they've maybe spent a couple of years uh, uh, thinking about these areas and, and, and writing a, a book that is easy to read and you know, does make a little bit of positive impact, but ultimately it isn't the encyclopedia, it isn't the absolute how-to guide because it doesn't include all of the things that are important from a behavioural science perspective because... You know, these books don't have the map, ultimately, the guide to the absolute guide to building new habits. So let me tell you what that is. We know that although willpower is the spark of making a, a positive change, it allows us to put the brakes on hue, the, the horribly unhelpful emotion part of our brain. But that's not enough. That's not going to build you a new habit. It can stop you from doing the unhelpful thing like beating yourself up and it can start you moving in the right direction but willpower is a limited resource so what we're actually looking to do is use behavioral science to help us develop something called implicit emotional regulation this means that we become less reliant on willpower and the the helpful habits that we want become as we're saying, habits, they become automatic and that's driven by implicit emotional regulation. So a habitual form of regulating our emotions, which is the seat of resisting temptation. It's the seat of doing more things which are helpful for our health, our happiness and our performance. And to help us, behavioural science is a hugely complex field. It's often talked about in economics. Um, we have different experts around the world who've spent their entire life studying different elements of behavioral science and therefore that makes it really complex to to be able to get all those ideas together and and turn them into a useful uh, application method that we can actually use in our daily lives because they're developed by scientists who use lots of uh, difficult words and very niche words and it's often hard to penetrate exactly what they mean and therefore it's really different, difficult to interpret how to apply the, uh, what they're talking about in your life. And that's our job ultimately. So we've spent a long time taking all this, using this research and testing it and refining it and making it work for real people in their day-to-day -day lives. And the model we've created or the framework we've created to help people to build new habits using the best behavioural science we can understand is um, the nine action factors model and let me, let me talk you through through the model so we've got the mindset factor we've got the habit factor which is about keeping our change the changes we want to make small or if we're going to make change recognise that it's going to be baby steps tiny little steps We've got the personal motivation factor. We've got the personal knowledge and skills factor. We've got the community knowledge and skills factor. We've got the social influence factor. And we've got, uh, we've got the external digital and physical triggers factor. We've got the rewards and penalties factor. And we've got the brain states factor. And there's a different set of, of research behind each of those areas that show us that they're really important in us being able to build new habits, change our behaviour, but not any one of those nine factors explains everything, which is why we need to use them in combination. And to help people to uh, start building new habits ultimately, we, we create what we call change aids, which implicitly built into those change aids are the nine action factors and they're, they're kind of invisible it means that when you fill out when you use these change aids they actually make you activate lots of the nine action factors and the simplest one we've created is called the daily T plan T stands for tiny empowering action and this is something that we get people to do every single day and it's you do it in two minutes really easy. You start by reflecting on how well you did your best to be your best yesterday and achieve your goals. 
So you give yourself a score out of 10. 10 would mean you were perfect. One would mean you were a failure. So you give yourself a score about how well did you do your best. Then you, then you select um, a tiny empowering action. So that could be something like, I'm not going to check my news today, I'm going to go for a five minute walk at lunchtime, I'm going to eat a piece of fruit for breakfast, I'm going to write a positive reflection at the end of the day, I'm going to go for a walk after my evening meal. So just one tiny thing that you're going to do that's going to make your life a little bit easier that day and make it easier to score, score higher on, on the best doing scale. And then finally, you say, why? Why do you want to do that? Well, I might not be checking the news today because that's going to make it easier for me to focus and be productive. I might go for a walk at uh, lunch in order to help me to have a more, um, to, to reduce some stress and have a more productive afternoon. I might write a positive reflection at the end of the day, or what we call a three to one reflection or a wabba, I might do that because that's going to help me to switch off and have a more restful evening and, and get to sleep uh, more more easily. So that's all that's all the tea plan is. Lots of lots of very sophisticated science behind it. But you do it in three simple steps. You essentially do some intelligent self watching by giving yourself a score out of, of ten for how well you did your best to be your best. You then select at least one tiny empowering action that's going to make it easier for you to be your best today and then you um, say why why do I want to do this and by doing that you're, you're firing up some of those nine action factors that make it easier to build new habits so to make this really easy for you to do we've built uh, the daily tea plan into the me power resilience planner which is absolutely free just go to our website you can download that you can get your colleagues to download it as well and if you start to do this together you're then going to bring in some more of the nine action factors like social influence for example um, and, and some other some other powerful reward and, and penalty type fa uh, type factors so if you want to start building new habits if you want to start helping your people to build new habits it's really simple just go download the free me power resilience planner and start creating those daily tea plans i'm going to talk lots more about building new habits in further podcasts but until then i hope you enjoy the rest of the day